An internal critique is a very common and very powerful tool for investigating worldviews. It involves adopting someone else's worldview for the sake of argument, and then checking to see if it contains contradictory ideas. If it does, then the rational thing to do is to change or abandon one or both of these ideas. This is the power of internal critique. But with great power comes great Christian doubt. One of the most common internal critiques of Christianity is the so-called problem of evil, also presented as the problem of suffering. This internal critique points out the apparent contradiction between a God who is all-powerful, all-loving, and perfectly moral, with a world that contains suffering and evil. Indeed, internal critiques like these are often what drag people out of Christianity, so apologists know that they need to take these arguments very seriously. Unfortunately, when faced with internal critiques like the problem of evil, Cameron Bertuzzi of Capturing Christianity has decided to fight dirty, just to make sure his audience doesn't start to doubt. He seems to realize that his responses are not very compelling, so to quell any lingering doubts about the problem of evil, he goes on to undermine the very practice of internal critique. He doesn't say this, of course, and perhaps this is not his intention, but the arguments he presents do exactly this. The first way Cameron undermines the practice of internal critique is by arguing that his opponent is actually appealing to something external to make their case. In the context of how a perfectly moral and loving God is compatible with evil and suffering, he says, well, that's an entirely different area of debate called axiology, which is about value and about what a being like God would or should value. Axiology, you see, is not a part of Christianity, but the problems of evil and suffering rely on it, so therefore, these are not internal critiques of Christianity. The claim that God would want less suffering is really a claim about what God would value most. God would see a world with less suffering as more valuable than a world with the amount of suffering in our current world. This claim, therefore, concerns what philosophers called axiology. Axiology is just the study of value. So in my view, when someone says that the Christian God wants to bring about such and such, they're actually bringing external axiological assumptions to bear on what God would value most. And what I want to point out is that those axiological assumptions are external to Christianity. They aren't found within the concept of Christianity itself. Well, if that's true, Cameron, then there is no such thing as an internal critique because this kind of appeal happens in every worldview. Worldviews, and the internal critiques thereof, all rest on assumptions and agreements about what words mean and what they entail, such as what it means to say that someone is all-loving. This is not a separate debate. It's coherently defining the terms you use to describe your own worldview. You have chosen to describe your God as all-loving even though, in most people's estimation, to say that someone is loving is to say that they value the well-being of others. It's very difficult to honestly imagine an all-loving being who is not chiefly concerned with the well-being of the beings it created, such as the God of Christianity. Hence, the problem, the internal-to-your-worldview critique of suffering. This is not an external appeal, it's basic definitions of the words you've chosen to use, which every internal critique relies upon. You cannot escape an internal critique by deflecting to a definition fight and then claiming to have stepped outside of the critique. To show how this works, imagine someone who claims to be a successful businessman, despite the fact that his business lasted only two days, earned no profit, and then filed for bankruptcy. If this man really was a successful businessman, then his business wouldn't have gone that way. This is a simple and sound internal critique. But what if we used Cameron's logic? Well, you see, business law does not rigorously define what it means to be successful. That's a whole other discussion about economic theory and personal development. Therefore, it's not an internal critique to point out that successful businessmen don't lose all their money in a business that lasts only two days. 
Thank goodness for that. Now I can keep on believing that I'm a successful businessman. You almost had me doubting the thing that gives my life value and purpose. But we can't have that, now can we? The second way Cameron undermines the practice of internal critique is by insisting that even if there does appear to be a contradiction between two of our beliefs, even if we can't think of a way to reconcile a loving God with suffering, that doesn't mean we need to abandon our contradictory beliefs. It just means that we have a gap in our understanding. And what's wrong with that? Let's just assume that we can't think of a good answer to this question. Does it follow now that God doesn't exist? Still no. All that means is that we have a gap in our knowledge. That's it. Saying, I don't know why God allows child cancer, but surely God has a reason, is a completely legitimate answer. After all, there is a limit in what we can understand, so we shouldn't expect to know everything. Now, skeptical theism has its own problems, which I discussed in a previous video linked below. But it creates another problem when apologists like Cameron use it to address contradictions. It undercuts internal critique as an entire category of argument, not just when it comes to Christianity. It's one thing to say that you don't know how to explain some fact by itself, because we accept that this is often inevitable with any worldview. Why did God create us with five fingers instead of six? We may not know, but that's not really a problem. It's a very different thing to say that you don't know how to explain a contradiction between two or more facts in your worldview. This is not something we typically grant as inevitable. If we do grant this, if we agree that participants in a philosophical discussion are allowed to believe things which contradict on the grounds that it's possible that they don't actually contradict if only we had more information, then there's no power behind internal critiques. People can just believe anything at all and then hide behind varying degrees of proposed ignorance. If you're allowed to say, I don't know how to resolve this contradiction, if you think that is an acceptable way for a person to hold on to their contradictory beliefs, then you've granted everyone the right to believe in contradictory things. So what's even the point of internal critique? What's even the point of trying to be rational? Cameron Bertuzzi's reasoning, if accepted, would categorically rob internal critiques of their power. And I think this is exactly what Cameron wants when it comes to his Christianity. He wants to stubbornly insist that it's okay to believe in contradictory things simply by hoping that they're not actually contradictory. Guess what, Cameron? I'm a successful businessman, even though I made no profit and my business died after just two days. Now, it's true, I don't know how to reconcile these two things. This certainly is a gap in my knowledge, and maybe if I had a complete understanding of economics and what it means to be successful, then I'd be able to explain this apparent contradiction. But I'm still a successful businessman, right? Besides, you're bringing in all these external assumptions about success that aren't found anywhere in business law, so it's not really an internal critique in the first place. I am a successful businessman. You see? Internal critique addressed. No need to doubt my self-image as a successful businessman, because internal critiques don't really mean anything. At least, not when they're applied to me. Not when they're applied to things I'm emotionally invested in. If Cameron Bertuzzi's religion can't stand up to internal critiques, well then, internal critiques must be wrong.